Hey everybody, welcome to the Julia Kamanga Show. I know it's been a moment since you ever heard me say that, but I am kind of trying to get back into my YouTube videos. I've been going through quite a bit, so let me just give you a bit of housekeeping and then let's get into the video. So, first and foremost, I've been going through a lot like in life, good and bad. Um, and also I was going through quite a bit mentally, so I'm kind of like... And also, you know, trying to look for jobs and, you know, figure out where I want to be creatively. It's been quite a lot for me, so I haven't really been making videos properly. Even with my last vlog, it's just a compilation of all the random stuff that I've been doing. But to be very honest with you, it wasn't my best work because I wasn't as focused like I was with the Cape Town vlog. So, hopefully now I can just give you content that's pure and better <laughs> and well thought out. But let's just, you know, forget about the past and let's look at a new. Today... On a more funny note, I decided I want to do something that I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm a creative, I'm an artist, I do a lot of different things. Yes, my main focus is film and photography, but actually the way my art passion started was because I started reading like novels when I was pretty young, so I wanted to be a writer. And I've written different things, like I've written a lot of different things. Unfortunately, I don't have like everything I've written. And, you know, I wish I did because I used to write songs. I know, right? And I know it's somewhere in my cupboard. Somewhere deep in my cupboard because I'm a hoarder. But I'm so lazy to find them. But I will, hopefully I can do like a part two of this video and I can do my songwriting things. I'll sing for you with my bad voice. But, right now, I've kept my stuff. Like guys, I've kept my things here. Like I'm not letting go of my bad writing because I need to remember where I was and see where I am now. So I've completed two novels, I've started a million, but I've completed two novels, they're not great. But the very first novel that I ever wanted to start writing was so nonsense because I was 10 when I started this novel. I'm writing about a 30 something year old woman, about pregnancy, about marriage, you know? And at the time I was so young that like the only characters in my world were white. So I was writing about white people. I know nothing about white people. I don't know what they do. But here I am busy writing about white people. And I mean in the sense that I generally, I'm not even joking. As much as I went to school with white people, my life was very much revolved around black people. You know, and in the sense, I mean my family. <laughs> like, I had a very small group of people that I really went to houses of and stuff. Only when I was a bit older did I start going to white people's houses and you know, learning new cultural things, I guess. But like, I was here writing this novel called Melanie's Life, the beginning of the end. I thought it was so brilliant, the beginning of the end. Like, I heard that probably somewhere and I was like, I'm going to do that. So I'm gonna read you guys um, an excerpt of my first novel and we're gonna read a bunch of other stuff that I've written. Guys, you may laugh at me. Obviously this video is meant to be all about like, funny nonsense. But remember, I was 10. Melanie's life, the beginning of the end. Okay, this is me writing the blip so that I can send it to an editor and the, I mean a publisher, sorry. Okay, storyline. Melanie falls pregnant and when telling everyone, their reaction is shocking, but not as shocking as her husband's reaction. Her sister is also having trouble at home. Mal gets into a car accident and is in a coma for three months and finds Chris cheating on her with her second cousin, Diana Mike, who also has a husband. It's, a hard, it's hard work since her boss starts hitting on her at work. Her boss is a lesbian and he feels it. <laughs> hey guys, you know how many times I've read this just in general, but it still makes me laugh. Her boss is a lesbian and he reveals her and Mel tells her she's getting a divorce. She goes on vacation with her sister in London and falls for a pool cleaner, but that is... What? A pool cleaner that is also on holiday with his girlfriend. What happens next is all in the book. First and foremost, let's decipher this shit, okay, real quick. Let's just, guys, 10 year old me, writing about someone who's falling pregnant and affairs, but I don't really write about the fair. I'm writing about London. I've never been to London in my life. Why am I writing about London? And why is a pool cleaner on vacation? I remember specifically that he cleans pools on his vacation. <laughs> and why is he a pool cleaner? I'll tell you why. Because I remember reading a book, probably by Sophia Kingsella. I think the domestic goddess and I think it like inspires us. I think I remember that like where I got that idea from. Not like yeah because it's kind of that idea that like someone who's upper class falls in love with someone who's lower class and then you know it's great because he teaches her how to be a human or something. But I, I generally don't think that was where I was going. And also 
like what is this blip i've said nothing why have i given away so much information but also like given no information at the same time oh guys okay let's read the first page <clears throat> i don't understand anyway chapter one first may friday workers day Menini Harbour, it reminds me of one of those rich snobs, and I said snobs, not snobs, but I know what I was trying to say, that uses their husband's money, therefore in return sleeps with them, the kind of woman who has never made a single piece of cash in her life. Now, I was going to say a dime, but I'm like, I don't know what that is, so I was like, let me translate this to South Africa. Also, again, I'm sorry for the dogs, every time I record. It's a different time, it's like two minutes to two. These dogs bark at four o'clock, but no, they're like, Jules is recording, so let me bark right now. These are not my dogs, because if they're my dogs, they'd be behaved. Anyway, let's get back into it. My maiden name is worse off, Melanie Darty Jessie. I just googled white people names, by the way. It is the most embarrassing thing, and like my sister, hot Jessica Jessie. Luckily, she married, a guy, married Grant Martin. Okay, wait, let me start from the beginning to help you a bit. My life is complicated, and therefore I've written a diary. Or should I say journal since I'm older and it makes sense? My name, my name is Melanie. People call me Mel, of course. I mean, how many Melanies have different nicknames anyway? I spend most of my life with my best friend Desiree Mentes, who spends a lot of time at her doctor's office seeing if her three daughters are sick. She married, She is married with kids. Isn't that funny? Married with kids is a show. Because I had to explain the joke to you in case you didn't know. Um, no, that's me saying that. Sorry, that's not in the book. <laughs> Expect, uh, except she's cheating on her really hot husband. What? Oh, except she's cheating on her really hot husband with her boss, Christopher Iron. Again, I just googled my names. He looks sort of like Brad Pitt with dark chocolate hair with a six pack, and I spelled pack wrong, like in like Brad Pitt in Fight Club. Anyway, I, I'm also married to a selfish man named Christopher Harbour, who is unemployed. He got fired for stealing money from his boss. He hasn't bothered looking for a job for six months and decided to give up. I wish I left him a long time ago, but my conscience told me to stay. Suffer for my mistakes, if you put it like that. Chris isn't even handsome at all. At least a few weeks ago, I found out I was pregnant with his child. Oh, I didn't know. It's just a few weeks. Sorry, not at least. How are we going to survive on one spouse's salary? And the spouse we are surviving on is the one who's pregnant. I work at Multimedia Design. I work as a multimedia designer. The reason I was obsessed with multimedia designers is because my cousin told me she wanted to be a multimedia designer, so I got obsessed with it because I think I low-key knew I wanted to be in something very interesting to do with like creativity, but I didn't know I was allowed to. It's a lot. Okay, just a bit more and we're done. I am in charge of making sure the games our, our workers produce are given an age limit, are suitable for viewers' eyes and absolutely fun. My boss Ivy Clinton is a lesbian and has a huge crush on me. It's not even easy walking in the office without her looking at my boobs. She once tried to make out with me. I guess this is what I deserve for getting really drunk in a party. I wasn't married yet. Chris was just my boyfriend then. Dancing like a fool in public and kissing every girl that came my way. I kissed Ivy but she took it the wrong way. Well, babes, if you kiss someone, <laughs> they may take it the wrong way. Like, okay, but anyway. Okay, I'm just going to finish until the paragraph and then we're done. My sister Jessica Martin used to have a crush on Chris in high school. She used to be his friend, following him around everywhere until she saw him making out with another girl. The girl was me, her sister of all people. She hated me for years, until one night she found another man who was now her husband. We are best friends anyway. So let's get, let's get back to the story. Well, my life is not a story. I wrote 15 pages of this sentence. So, in case some of you don't know, I used to be a hardcore Christian. I used to believe in God, the Christian God, and I used to believe in the Christian Jesus, and I used to believe in the Christian ways. I believed, kind of, in the Bible. I was a really, like, low-key feminist when I was a kid. Like, I used to question a lot of shit. And, like, people would be like, no, you shouldn't question the Bible. I'm like, yeah, but, like, some of it doesn't make sense, Bethany. So I wrote a sermon um, when I went to Rivers Church in Sanson. And I'm not gonna lie, the church is still pretty dope, but I mean, obviously it's for rich people. But the point is, it's pretty dope, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna say anything bad about it. It really was open and like, you know, allowed a lot of conversation. They didn't offend me like the youth group in Rema did. And then like, this guy is just like, so you're teenagers now and you're gonna start having sex, which is bad, don't have sex. And also, let me tell you why gays and lesbians don't make sense. Imagine you take a puzzle and another puzzle piece and it doesn't fit. Doesn't make sense, no, you have to put in the puzzle piece that fits. So you're trying to say, because penis, and a vagina need to be together you cannot be gay 
even though technically speaking specific things can fit in other things so that's okay what he was saying <laughs> anyway. oh so i wrote a sermon sorry guys i wrote a sermon and it was okay i still believe in a lot of what i was saying because it's kind of the idea that like as much as i'm not a christian i'm still spiritual and i don't believe you can pray and not do you can't be like oh god give me a job and then not apply for anything babes life does not work like that that was what the sermon was about but i said in order to pray and do you need to also believe in god right so here's the one part i just want this little part so you can see what my mindset was i could be ready i want you all to listen to me okay because i'm preaching okay Alrighty, amen hallelujah what happens if we reject god okay first note that there are two types of rejection one is positive rejection and the other is negative rejection Positive rejection is when you reject something that will have a negative impact on your life like smoking, drinking and sex before marriage. Then there is negative rejection where you reject something willfully that will have a positive impact on your life. For example, you don't want to go to the best school because none of your friends are going there. So you go to a bad school and start doing bad things. Judgy, judgy Christian Joel. Rejection is not really a nice thing. Some of you may have been rejected by a guy or a girl. Some may have been rejected by friends and family members. But do you know if you keep trying, maybe that friend, family member or guy and girl will accept you? No, consent is important and someone doesn't want you to move on. If, you don't, if they don't accept you, then they might not be worth it. Which, I know some men will take this differently, but maybe you are not worth it. <laughs> God tries to reach out to you and it's like that when it's like when someone gives you a hand and you go nah I don't want to hang out with you it hurts and God has given you so much and you don't accept it it's not like God goes I shall curse you to a horrible death and suffering he would never do something like that blah 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 verse about rejection and how God does not do the things rejection can hurt somebody everyone knows don't tell me you've never been rejected because all of I can say is you're a liar Jesse, Jesse. some people may have not been rejected at 15 guys even when we were small, when our mother said no to sweets, you felt like crying because she rejected your request. It's sort of the same when you reject someone who gives you so much and willfully say no. You need, you say you need proof? There's so much proof and you ignore it. Oh guys, I shame. Me, I could have been a good pastor. I shame. Except when I started questioning things that people fire me. I definitely understand to an extent where I was going with this. But I think it's mostly the fact that I'm very judgy. Shame, but I was 15 and this is what they taught me and stuff. Not that like drinking and smoking are good for you necessarily anyway. So I definitely understand that. But if you drink in moderation and stuff, it's not a bad thing. You can look after yourself and stuff. There's nothing wrong with sex before marriage unless you don't want to. That's your choice. Um, but I don't want people to feel like sex before marriage is a bad thing. You know, because do you. Some of you don't want to get married. I want to get married. I mean... I've written everything under the sun. I've written poems, I've written songs, I've written scripts, I've written short stories. I have a lot of short stories which are pretty and not gonna be pretty good. But yeah guys, I hope you enjoy that. Just wanna expose myself a little for you, because yeah no. Actually I'm so good at writing that I might get a writing job. So I'm excited, I hope it works out. This video will be out by the time I figure out if I do or do not have the job. So it depends. I will probably edit it out. Anyway guys, thank you so much for Staying tuned and being with me and laughing with me and laughing at me and, and enjoying my reading. And I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day. Stay beautiful, be beautiful. And keep writing, y'all. You can grow. This proof.